friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I'm going to be working on my third story project using the Transitions Story Kit from Allie Edwards. So for the first project I did a story about my daughter and I have a processed video. I will link it up at the eye for you guys that was using the speech bubble die cuts but I hadn't ha I didn't have the physical kit yet so I used the digital ones and made them kind of my own. For the second project, I did one, there's not a video for it, I just shared it over on Instagram, and it is a story about my son, and one that will go into his album, just transitioning from baby to this toddler little boy that he is now. Today, this third story is also going to be one that will go into my daughter's album. I will have some stories that will go into our family album. I'm just waiting on my physical supplies to get here so I can use those to make those stories. So for this one, I am also using digital and I will also show you guys a process on my computer for putting together the digital components that I am using. So the spread itself, I wanted to talk about uh, changing into fall. Uh, and learning to love the season of fall and and the the newness that that brings like it's the it's an ending but it's also a beginning and that's something that's really exciting fall has always been one of my favorite seasons and it's one that is quickly becoming one of Isabella's favorites as well so I have a couple of pictures. These are both pictures from last fall, so from 2019, um, but it didn't really matter when the photo was taken. I just wanted one of her being outside in leaves, and since the season right now is still summer, um, I just decided to go back and find some older pictures. So I've got two here, one that is muted and one that is not muted. So. I will show you the process of exactly how I create this photo right here in Photoshop. However, when I originally created this and printed it, my thought was to use this card that has a wreath on it and it says finding the beauty in transitions and I wanted to use it on acetate. I've actually got it right here. When I printed it off, you can barely see it. Uh, let's see if I've got white. Okay, you can probably see it now. So when I printed it on acetate, it actually became very, very, very translucent. So when I put this on the photo, you can't see it at all. So what I decided to do was to reprint it on vellum. So I have the vellum right here, and with this one, you can see it a little bit better on the picture itself. Now, I wish I would have printed my photo full color, color instead of, um, instead of muted, but you know what, that's okay. I will go with it. And honestly, when I put it here, maybe the muted was still the best plan. You know what, I think it was still the best plan. So there's that. Anyway, so I'm going to use this as an overlay. So this is just gonna be outside of a pocket and something that flips on its own. The photo behind it, I used some of the digital word phrase stickers to add around the perimeter of the photo. And then I also have this butterfly that came it was from one of the chipboard pieces and I extracted the butterfly off of it and I'm just gonna use that as an embellishment. So without further ado, let's head over to the computer. I will show you how I created these individual components and then we're gonna come back over to the desk, put you guys on fast forward and get this thing put together. We'll slow down once I get everything completed. So let's get started. All right, so here on my screen, I'm in Photoshop Creative Cloud. I have the final product of what this page is going to look like once we get all of the elements created. So for this spread, I did three things digitally before printing it all off to bring it over to the craft table. The first was to create my photo with the words going around the perimeter of it, or at least three of the sides. The second was to create a transparent, um, like interactive element uh, with this wreath and the third was this little butterfly embellishment down at the bottom so let's start with the photo and take you guys through the process of all of this so the first thing I did was to grab my photo and crop it down into that um, page protector size so the 6.875 by 8.25 let's just do it here then I wanted to make this picture transparent or not transparent more opaque I wanted it to be opaque and a bit muted because my original intention was to print off this um, this wreath right here 
on clear acetate. So when you look through the wreath, I wanted it to be a little bit more muted so you could actually see the wreath and the words around the photo. So to do that, I went over to my image here and unlocked it, and then I reduced my opacity. I, I don't remember what I reduced it to. It definitely was not 50. So let's try like 65. That might have been what I did. Um, so we've got my more opaque looking picture here. And because it is opaque, we can now see the transparent background. So what I'm going to do is go up to layer, new, and background from layer. And that's going to put a background or a white background behind that opaque photo. So now you can see it is muted and looks pretty good. So from here, let's zoom in a little bit. From here, I wanted to add some words from the clear sticker sheet around the perimeter of the picture. So to do that, I opened up the JPEG, or the PNG here, not JPEG, the PNG. And these are all on, um, it's on a transparent background because it is going to be clear stickers just with black text. So what I wanted to do was isolate the individual rows in order to layer them around the photo. So let me show you an example. So using my marquee tool, and over here you can pick different shapes. I just wanted the rectangle. Uh, I'm going to draw a rectangle around the words there, the whole row, right click and layer via copy. So then I can take this layer two, copy it, and then go to my photo and paste it onto my photo here. Let's move this down. Um, so I did this for a whole bunch of them and then just kind of toggled them to go different directions if I wanted them to. In order to change the direction of the text, I made sure the layer was selected, uh, clicked on Control and T, and then up in this little angle box, I wrote or I typed in negative 90 in order to get it to go on its side, and negative one, I guess doesn't have to be a negative, just 180, in order to get it to go upside down. So actually, I can show you that when we move it up there. Okay, so we can kind of see how that's going to work now. Um, okay, so let's delete that. So if I were going to do this again, I probably would change this text and make it, um, make it white instead of black. You know what? I'm going to try something while you guys are here. I want to create a new layer, 100% opacity. Now what happens if I paste that on there? Nope. Okay. I was just curious to see if it would make it more black than than it was. Okay. So let's make this stuff, let's make this text white because I think it would show up a little bit better if it were white. So we're going to make sure that original layer one is selected, go up to adjustments, click on this hue and saturation, and then we're going to take the lightness uh, bar here and toggle it all the way up to 100%. So now that text is white. Uh, it is going to be really difficult to see it. So potentially that's something you might want to do once you have your um, your text, uh, what do I want to say, like sectioned out. So let's grab that marquee tool and we can select different rows and just layer via copy. Let's do two of them. Uh, this one layer via, nope, I got to make sure that layer one is selected and then layer via copy. Okay, so if we do the hue and saturation, we can um, let's move layer one up to the top. So we can do hue and saturation and go all the way up to white. And then let's move it down so that we just get these two layers. And we're going to, um, like, let's merge this one. And then we can do it again. So let's click here, go to adjustments, hue, saturation, all the way up. And then we will merge these ones here as well. Now, since I have the black on top, you can't see the white, but the white is underneath. So let's grab one of them and go back to the photo and paste that. That is not what I wanted. Okay, work for me here. There we go. So there's one of them that says making things better, good things ahead. So then I could take the white ones and layer those around the perimeter of the picture. It might show up a little bit better than black, but really it's whatever your preference is. So that is how I created that photo. 
Next, let me show you the transparency portion. So for this one, I am going to be using the four by six card that looks like this. It is the wreath with finding beauty in the transition. And then what I want to do is create another canvas that's that page protector size, 6.875 by 8.25. And then we are going to select all of this and copy it and paste it right here onto that canvas. From here, I want to transform, control T, and we can expand the wreath to make it real big uh, so that it basically touches the edges of the page. I just want it to be as big as possible, but without having to cut any of it off. Then we hit enter, it will bring everything into focus and we can merge those layers together. From here, I want, so you can actually print it just like this on, um, vellum or on acetate. I did it on both. Originally I was going to do acetate, but found it was a little hard to see. So then I printed it on vellum instead. Um, if you want to see what this would look like with a photo behind it, what you can do is go to the uh, magic wand tool up here. So there's the quick selection and magic wand. We want magic wand. Then click on any area of white and then hit delete. Actually, before we do that, we need to unlock it. So unlock it, click on the white. Nope. Okay, so undo that. Click on the white and then hit the delete button. And that is going to, when we unselect it, it's going to just show you the wreath at that point. So then you can select all of it, copy it, and add it on top of your photo just to see, you know, what would what would this look like um, on my page. So that is how I was able to just make sure that my photo would line up in the right spot and all of that. Um, okay, so that is that. And then the last thing that I did was to create this little butterfly embellishment and that came from this chipboard piece. So again, what I did here was use that magic wand tool, grab the white and hit delete in order to get rid of the white around it. Let's unselect. And then I also don't really want the phrase because I just want this to be an embellishment. So I'm just gonna go in here and erase that phrase and there we go. Cause then I can take this copy it, paste it, and you know, move it where I wanted it to go, which I'm gonna put mine right down in the bottom. So that is all of the pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting everything printed off, and then I will meet you back at the craft table to get this page assembled. So now that we have the computer stuff done, the rest of this spread is going to come together really quick. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just trim off that card there, which is the change where I added my story. Then we're going to go ahead and trim out all of these pieces as well. So this picture here is going to be outside of the pocket as well as the vellum piece. And so both of those, I'm going to use my six hole punch to add the holes in there to go into the album. I always, when I, whenever I do a video that includes the six hole punch, I always try to include that down below in case you guys want to check that out. It is definitely an awesome tool if you're working in the six ring binders. Um, I work in those a lot, so it definitely is, is a, a must have tool for me. So then I've got the uh, a filler card there, the butterfly I'm going to fussy cut out, and then this one I'm just being very careful to make sure that I am cutting the right portions off and again making it the size of the page protector which is um, just under 7 inches by 8.25 inches. So here we go, fussy cutting the butterfly out. I did go through my stash to find a word phrase sticker that I could layer with that butterfly. I had used one digitally, uh, but decided to just find one from my stash instead of printing something out. Um, and I think I found it from the Christmas set from last year because it's actually white with the dark green words. So it, it goes really well with this spread. So we're going to layer those up, stick that down in the bottom corner, and then that is really it, you guys. So we will slow back down. All right, you guys, that finishes this spread, and that went pretty quick and easy. So um, we've got this vellum piece over here, which I still debate whether or not I should have printed it with... Um, full color or with the opacity, but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> I can see, I can see through it to see her. And then when I move this, I can see it much better. So it all works out. Um, 
But yeah, I really, I really like the way that this works and I liked turning that into a wreath element. If this is something that uh, inspires you guys and something you might want to try, you could also um, print this off on cardstock and then have some tabs that reach over and clip onto this part so then there would be nothing around it. It would just be the wreath and then you could flip the wreath over. That would work too. So, you know, whatever whatever floats your boat, but it, it works good enough for me. Um, all right. So that is going to do it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos. If you haven't already, um, I will be back again on Wednesday for my project life this week. And then again on Friday for our story kit crush project. So hopefully I will see you guys then until then. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye now.